I'm fresh. You gotta be fresh. That's not how this song goes, though. Damn. <laughs> I do like this song, though. That didn't sound anywhere near and loud enough. Yeah, I don't know. Sorry. <laughs> Ooh, we're back, though. It's a holiday Monday. Oh, right? yeah. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah, it's a holiday. Yeah, it is a holiday. Some, I mean, uh, in some... Queen Victoria? Some... Queen, Victoria, Queen Victoria's birthday is celebrated. <laughs> <laughs> two <Really>? four. <laughs> yeah. So is drinking two four packs of beer. <laughs> Oh, two four weekend. That's right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Every for the for, Canadians, for, for, yeah, for the not for the non Canadians, don't <laughs> worry about it. <laughs> yeah. It's just a holiday we have here, where everybody just goes out, l- leaves the city, goes camping, goes to the cottage. That's really what the ho- what this holiday is about. Well, I'm saving my money for the F1 holiday. Yes, Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> different too. kind of Canadian vacation. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> spend it all in Montreal. Uh, but hey, guys! So Monica Grand Prix coming up. Well, yes. people should probably should know what they're listening to. Oh yeah, yes, right, 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 right. <laughs> it's a flat of fever podcast. It is. We're Welcome. back. Yep. Hey, we get, get get a lot of uh, listeners and 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 viewers from the from the Netherlands. If you are Dutch, hello. <laughs> <laughs> if you're a, a human from anywhere, really, hi. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. aliens too. What's up? Yeah. <laughs> the NSA, hello, hi. <laughs> We're thinking about you. NSA. <laughs> um, yes, uh, Flood of Fever podcast. Find us on uh, all kinds of places. Flood of Fever dot com. Uh, Flood of Fever. Uh, We're on Reddit too sometimes. Twitter, Facebook. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All, 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 all of them. All, all the, the internet spots. All, all of the internets. All the sharing sites. Now, testing is over. Episode sixty one. What are we going to start with? Testing or modeling? We're going to talk about. Let's get Spain out of the way, so right. we don't have to talk about Spain anymore. Okay. Until next year, because there's a lot of testing and racing and more testing there. <laughs> talked about Spain a lot. Yes, a it's lot. true. It's been a lot. You're supposed to turn off your phone. Yeah, sorry. So, I don't know. The, not a lot of uh, news came out of testing, though. Like, tangible news, like headlines or... There's a... Uh, speculation, even... No big accidents. No, it's true. Uh, no big. Well, I guess there are some up and comer drivers, but no like. Step out of con, like Ocon, yeah. They, they were basically like they dangled like a Mercedes <laughs> drive ahead of him, and they were like, "Nah, actually, no." You know what he though? Was, he's he's got to wait now, and uh, maybe like shitty for his career and mm. his patience and all that. But now he doesn't have to drive at Spain. Cause there's been a lot of talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he gets to go to Silverstone instead. Who? You know, uh, Ocon? Ocon, yeah. Oh, nice. There's going to be another in season test after the British Grand Prix. Okay. At Silverstone. Another two days? Gonna, yeah, I believe two days. Mm-hmm. And uh, I don't know. I think it's more of a fun track to drive. More dynamic. Yeah, more than more than Spain for sure. Yeah. yeah. Less uh, physically demanding, I guess. I don't know if that's a uh, big positive or big negative, but. I think it's more fun. It's a way bigger track. Oh, yeah. More dynamic for sure, though. So, I don't know. It's not a huge loss for him. Mm-hmm. Right? Right? I guess. So. I mean, I think he uh, ultimately is going to be more linked with with the, with the Renault team in future. Like, he has better chances because he's French uh, than with Mercedes. So, really, not get, like losing that testing seat that day to Pascal Verline. It's only maybe just indicative of like in in, in uh, that's one of the things that's come out of uh, from testing if, if anything at all it's just speculation surrounding Mercedes. Well, uh, right, and but quickly, o- Ocon though yeah. did get to drive in testing. Yes, for Renault. For Renault, right? he, but he was gonna he was gonna right. drive like he, exactly. he, yeah he drove uh, uh, for Renault one day then he was supposed to drive for Mercedes the exactly. next. Exactly. See, a lot of people thought it was strange because do you think that Mercedes would want him to come and be like, hey, so. How was that car he drove yesterday? And yeah, but get what kind of info they could get out of him, right? Yeah, that's that. Yes, but but also maybe they don't want to be seen as possibly having done that. Yeah, maybe a little bit, right? I don't know. They they didn't give they didn't give it. This is all speculation because they didn't give us a reason. Right? It's true. Well, no, they, 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 I, they sort of the reason that apparently Pascal Verline got is that uh, Total Wolf came up to him and was like, 
hey, sorry, we ju- we didn't finish uh, testing everything that we needed to test right. with Nico Rosberg yesterday. So we need somebody in the car. They want someone with more experience with, with, yeah. that could convey. Yeah. But another rumor that I heard, though, was that Lewis Hamilton was supposed to. He was asked by the team after the race to stick around in Spain and do some, some of the testing for oh, the yeah. team. And he refused. That's but now he now he's being ruled out of the Silverstone testing. Yeah, I think he lost his his <laughs> chance. We, yeah. For, for I think and uh, there's rumor before we talk about Monaco though that he's not even racing this weekend. Who? Hamilton. Lewis Hamilton. Oh, that is so stupid. Though. It is kind of stupid. <laughs> but he gave, is that he, punishment then from either not doing the test or yeah, from yeah, really, even the weekend before? Yeah. So he, he didn't want to do the testing. He didn't want to stick around. He wanted to go to Cannes to the film festival instead. Hang out with his celebrity friends, you know, yeah. show off his watches and flashy pants and stuff. Whatever happened to his album? Yeah, maybe no. he's, he's just like, not just not mentioning it anymore. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> just hoping it just sort of slides into obscurity. People are like, mm, it's not that good, man. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, all right. All yeah. right. Okay, cool. Lewis, just stop talking about the damn album. <laughs> yeah. Drop it. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so I don't know. The, the rumors surrounding why Verline was called, partly because they wanted somebody with more experience, or partly because they really wanted someone with a lot more experience, and he said no. <laughs> Hamilton was supposed to have stayed, and he left. I don't know. That's, that's the story floating around. And yeah. that he possibly might not race this weekend yeah okay so we all know that that to be bullshit but one but not not because he gave up his testing seat Mm -hmm. because he was doing some uh party too hardy business at the film festival Uh uh-oh i heard about it well i heard that perhaps some there were some stolen photos floating around or something like that and mercedes found out about them and uh stolen photos yeah the, this is the headline in in quotes stolen photos who knows what that could mean though if you look at our uh, thumbnail today the, the the picture i gave you or if, if yep. you look at the uh links page the uh ham stolen pic there he is that might, that's possibly one of them with uh some chick there's some other that girl in front of him there i guess that's apparently his new girlfriend is that a Rihanna? I, don't, I don't think so <laughs> I don't think so. Apparently, you can smoke inside in France. Or maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, I don't know. So there's some there's some sort of um, commotion with him at his hotel, apparently, as well, on his way home. Yeah. yeah. Like he'd be like three in the morning. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know what the rumor is, but <laughs> apparently, he pissed off the team and they're thinking maybe he's not uh, focused. He's not so focused. Uh oh. And uh, gave Verline the seat. Okay, I'm not, I don't, I don't, I don't want to don't wanna wanna entertain the, the yeah, this I, I, rumor. I, like think, it's, I think Hamilton's going to be there in pole position yeah. myself. <laughs> <laughs> That's my guess. Yeah. Yeah. But like, is is it like is the fact that this speculation moving around like just a, a, a sign that things really are like getting to the breaking point at Mercedes, like in between like the the, the yeah, teammates. To the to the point that like people are like even giving like, giving some like Jesus thought to, to this speculation because they think like Jesus maybe the Mercedes top brass is just fi- like running out of ways to disciplining them like you know right. if you have like a guy right. like like Lewis and Nico that like they're just they don't care about any consequence yeah. of what they do like you know what's 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 next obviously I don't like I don't think any of this like it's even worth like, mentioning again that that Lewis isn't racing because they're gonna want to have their tr- their strongest man yeah it, it, yeah it, yeah of course but if they got into another accident like <laughs> then how, ha- how quickly do you think a, a, a change in in roster would be like would they I think wait? I, I think know. they'd I think they'd give uh, Rosberg's seat away well actually you know, you know yeah, I, th- I think so I don't know, and, that, and, that, and that's why it's so hard. Because like Rosberg is the championship leader right now by a lot. He is, but <laughs> Hamilton's worth so much more money. Yeah, in uh, draw and potential, in his pay, his 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 sponsorships, ev- everything that he does is. Listen, worth. I'll believe like more money. I, I I will believe that Rosberg maybe is like looking into other options other than Mercedes for next year, though. Yeah, mm-hmm. for next for year. For next year. Not, yeah, not this, year. this year. Yeah. No. Especially if he gets 
uh, the championship, if he wins the championship, yeah. I think Rosberg would be smart than just take his business elsewhere, so to speak. Right. Like he'd, he'd be fixing so many situations like his his own team's dynamic, then he could go to another team mm -hmm. that would that would take him maybe maybe Ferrari, who knows? Who yeah. knows? Like I who, who knows? Yeah, who yeah. else would really be able to take him? Cuz yeah, I'm sure he's expensive too, right? Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. it would have to be a top team mm -hmm. uh, or a team with top ambitions. Who knows? Yeah, depending on on, on how that goes. We we still don't know who um Heineken is going to sponsor. <laughs> yeah, one of they they're apparently they're rumored to be tied up with one of the teams. Yeah. But we'll get to more Heineken speculation later. Mm, but yeah. for now, I just but, I think that if if Nico Rosberg wants to start looking for another team for next year, that's like I believe that 100% because yeah, even if he wins, he can take his trophy, he's he, then, then he's he's a world champion already and he can go to a, a different team and demand maybe if not money like at least like a greater set of perks than maybe he has of uh, Mercedes right now, mm. and then he he'd be like getting away from Lewis really. Just right. it's too early in the in the season for any like serious like who's gonna take whose seat next year. But I think there's probably gonna be a lot of movement next year. I hope at the so. end of the season. I yeah. think a lot bunch of yeah. people are gonna move around. Yeah. Real Harrianto's mm. speculating himself now that well, he's, he's he, thinking he's not even gonna finish this season. He's it's uh, he's not getting enough tweets. Get, guys, tweet get a tweet. <laughs> Thirteen cents a, a tweet. <laughs> Or was it a text? text yeah, yeah. Well, not a tweet. Text, text him, man. Text him some money. <laughs> the guy's gonna keep driving. He's not even good yet. He's, uh. Uh, in terms of contracts, I'm not sure how they sort of work in the Formula One world. But are they? They're they're obviously done for like season to season, or like for for a few, a few years at a time. Right. Yeah, didn't not, Hamilton uh, just sign one with Mercedes? Like when we started the podcast for three years at least. For three years at least. Yeah. Some of them are for a few races. Yeah. Oh, like, really? Like last yeah. year, Rossi was uh, sharing his seat. Yeah. He's, he's with, a uh, what's a, what's like his name? The Spanish dude. Uh, the curly hair. Roberto M Mejia. Mary. Yeah. Mary. Yeah. The two of them shared a seat, so they just uh, I don't know. The, the whichever way their schedule worked, mm. they sh they shared the seat though. Yeah. Yeah. The team it's, can get put anybody in the seat they want to, right? As long as they have a super license. Some common contracts in F one, like. They, there's let's say for like a year with an option of two like with an option like they all have like these options that depend on like so many things like performance or whatever so if you right, okay. if you've like scored so many different points then like we can't like let you, like we can't tell you to leave next year for right. example like that, that, that oh, kind okay. of shit um lots of options are included into contracts especially with like drivers that you don't know like how they're gonna turn out or, or guys like nearing their end of their career really mm -hmm. i mean i think that was that was the whole thing with uh with jensen jensen had an option mm -hmm. uh, uh, uh with, with his with his mclaren honda contact contract anyway um so yeah, there, there's a variety of ways that the the contracts work and because because of that because not every driver's contract ends uh, or coincide with many things like that's that's why sometimes it gets ridiculous and like people start pretty much like counting down like hey we know you have like your your contract only goes to like this date this year like mm -hmm. what what are you gonna do like what, what are you gonna uh, drive next year and that kind of stuff and and it's hard to like shuffle them around because even let's say you wanted max for stepping and this is why red bull did what they did <clears throat> say you were Mercedes or Ferrari looking for a kid like Mar Max Verstappen and you know that like let's say prior to uh to last week's race you knew that like that his uh, or actually prior to him getting the the Red Bull seat you knew that his or you had an idea about his Toro Rosa contract and what kind of clauses it included and you probably like heard around because of the other rumors or whatever that mm -hmm. all right he has an option but if if he doesn't take it he's free to go to another team so like like let's let's oh, okay. right so let's okay. let's start hounding them and then as soon as Red Bull saw that like Ferrari and, Mer and Mercedes were moving in and trying to like steal their property that's he got but he got bumped up as part of like a contract re renegotiation that again assured him a future with Red Bull but then right. also effectively took him off the market for the next couple of years uh, so now if Ferrari were even want like you know if if they even wanting to start thinking about Max Verstappen <laughs> they can't they can't okay. And, and, it's same with Mercedes. Holy so, moly! This type of contract, like that type of clause, probably was 
almost like a secret until the very end too because you can see how that would bump his value mm -hmm. i mean like let it mm -hmm. let it seem like this driver's on the market yeah and be like ah suckers <laughs> Psych. <laughs> yeah let let the team start fighting and like they're yeah. probably if they're fighting to get max for stepping on their team then they probably have plan. Like it's a multi-million dollar decision. They oh, have yeah. a plan in place. Mm -hmm. Like we're gonna get this kid and do this and this and this. I mean, so essentially, those two teams wasted time. I, I think <laughs> in the but, past, teams were a lot more free. <laughs> you just pull out a Red Bull. Yeah. <laughs> really, a, Toro, a can of Toro Rosso. <laughs> I, I think in 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 the in the in ye olden days of F one, yeah, uh, I think team uh, managers and like you know you know people like in the top brass of each team were maybe a bit more free to make all kinds of irrational decisions when when hiring uh, drivers. Like they could go on a hunch or like they could see talent in somebody that nobody else had had spotted. But right. you know because because you know salaries were lower. Number one. The money was shared more equally, and there wasn't as much pressure from like big multinationals to to perform. Now, mm. especially the big teams, they're all like they're they're all accountable to some sort of big multinational, right? Mercedes, Ferrari, the Fiat Group, even Red Bull has the freaking the the Red Bull company to to, to account every single dollar they they spend. Right. So if they're gonna make a move on any driver, any driver. You best believe that like they, like there's at least like a a, a twenty page document with like reasons why projected like ROI like it's gotta go through an accountant first before it hits any yeah trust me like that's wow. that's yeah <laughs> probably a firm of accountants yeah, yeah. A team yeah uh, yeah at least yeah wow that's how cool. it especially like the most the 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 more high profile deals like what Lewis did. Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. Being one of the highest paid athletes in the world. Yeah. Oh really? He is, like yeah. who's like the next, or who's close to him? There's a, a handful. Yeah, like one or two golfers, um, soccer players. That British guy. He's the highest. He he's makes more than that. The the guy. He's the highest paid paid Brit. He's the highest paid Brit. Yeah, he, wow. he's the second or third highest sports. paid European and one of the highest in the world. Yeah. Yeah. Making somewhere around 50, 50 millions this year. Oh. Yeah, somewhere. So I forget. I don't know. I don't know, I don't know the number. Oh Plus all his hidden money in the uh, Granada and the right. Panama and yeah. his was he mentioned sponsorship that? deals that are part of his salary. In the Panama Papers, no. All the bonuses know. that he gets that aren't part of his salary per se. All kinds of stuff. Um, interesting. That Sorry. Crazy. Well, I think I think we started talking about testing, yeah. and then somehow <laughs> ended up here. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. There wasn't What's, a lot, yeah, a lot what, of news What were, what were takeaways from testing? The Renault, uh, everybody kept talking about, well, I kept asking the Renault drivers how it felt, and all the Renault drivers were pretty exciting. Pretty excited. Uh, excited, yeah. yeah. Um, Apparently, it, we're going to see that engine at Monaco. Because on the yeah, track. it was scheduled for Canada, for Canada or yeah. something, right? And they noticed some, they definitely noticed some gains uh, during testing. And now they're saying... That they're gonna bring the engine to Monaco. Now, yep. I was thinking about this, and then I was like, you know, it's, Red Bull's it's... bringing their watch. Yeah. <laughs> well, he, and and here's the thing, though. Here's the thing, Danny, because what um what the release from the that was at least on the Formula One dot com website said is that they're gonna show up with with this new engine for some drivers, mm. not all of them for some drivers and you got to think that Renault being in the position that they are mm -hmm. they're talking now that this new engine could give them somewhere between like uh, three tenths and four tenths of a second that's big mm -hmm. that's that's big and again yep. this is all about uh, going back to the, to the uh, JTI new uh, combustion system that all the teams are working on at least as far as we know maybe not Honda except but, not Honda yeah but whatever. Uh, so this this new innovation, they're gonna bring it to Monaco, and because they're so far back, right? Like we're talking about how now the t team Renault is like super happy if they get in the points, right? Yeah. yeah. If they bring that's what they're expecting to do, though. Yeah. But. If they bring this new, more powerful engine for Monaco, maybe like maybe it'll give him a chance to like you know get more than just the points, right? So I think that. 
it, whereas some teams are actually like looking not to introduce the new engine, the new more powerful engine to Canada, mm. because that's the track that's going to be like really, really hard on the engine and like mm -hmm. really extract like you know top power from the engine. If you have an engine that you know that it's gonna it's gonna give you like tenths of a second, you may as well also like play the counter strategy, not do what the other teams are doing, let them race in Monaco with older engines show up with a brand new engine that maybe give you a fighting chance to some to some points like it might be like it's it's one of those things that's like it's a bit if they do that it's gonna end up like it, 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 it's gonna disrupt the pattern that they've been having obviously so that they're gonna maybe end up in like the midfield or something or mm -hmm. like you know uh, fighting for some good points right but only for monaco as soon as they go back to canada <laughs> like when everybody shows up with their big engine updates they're gonna go right back but those few points are gonna count if they have a chance to get those points now mm -hmm. and if they wait to montreal they know that it's gonna be tougher to get those serious points right then why not why not speed it up so let's let's get the engines there yeah or speeding up sure. speeding up development and 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 like you know factory production and actually like getting the engines in the car though could have the negative effect that if everybody was aiming at Montreal once you start cutting those deadlines short mm -hmm. you you start to cut some corners uh -huh. perhaps yeah so we i mean you we miss could it, we could see a couple of new Renaults blowing pressure. up is basically where i'm <laughs> heading <laughs> but that's that's the risk that, that's the risk that you take <laughs> yeah so yeah for, so the ferrari rumor now is that they will be at canada with new engines Yes. Mercedes as well. Via yeah, Canada with points spent on new engines, tokens. Spent. Fantastic! It's gonna be great to see. Yeah, Mercedes. So and by new engines, uh, do you mean just like they've spent some some of their tokens on parts of the engine? Right, on part no, of not like yeah. a whole entirely new engine. No, obviously. that don't cost too so much. Okay. Yeah, no, I, that's that was my sort of thinking behind it. Yeah, and uh, Honda new guess, new spec of engine, I, guess, I suppose we should say. Ah, uh, okay. Renault, I believe this is their D spec engine. They're calling it. Their first full D spec. B spec. D spec. No, D, D, D. Their fourth, fourth, fourth oh. full, full spec engine upgrade, mm -hmm. I guess. Mm -hmm. And uh, Honda, I guess, just because all this uh, engine news is floating around, they put out a statement. <laughs> hey, we're here too, guys. <laughs> By the way, uh, we're here. <laughs> they said they have not spent any tokens yet. They won't be at Canada with a new engine, but that they that they've pulled about 0.3 seconds out based only on software so far since Australia. So 0.3 seconds since Australia, and uh, the quote that was interesting, because you said about the uh, HCCI, yeah. the turbulent jet ignition, etc., whatever yeah. the teams want to call it, Honda's quote was, uh, to improve the maximum power, we may, we may need some upgrades, some new parts, or some new combustion. From a control settings point of view, I think we're achieving maximum already. Yeah. So. They figured from their last race, they maximized their software, and now it's hardware from time. testing too. I guess maybe and from hard, yeah. They said from the last race, they were achieving okay. max power, but uh, they're not going to be spending any tokens before Canada, anyways. Ron so Dennis they're, said that that they're, that they're going to be the team be that's the, the champions. They're, they're, they're going to be the team that's going to yeah, really like really get in there, take it to really Mercedes. start rattling Mercedes cage. <laughs> yeah, that's that's what they're doing. Still holding on to hope. Hey! <laughs> uh, yeah, we're coming. We're here. <laughs> Remember us from the back? <laughs> we look like bumblebees. Yeah, yeah so I, I don't know. We'll, we'll see. I, I can't wait to see all these uh, engine upgrades. Should be cool. It's gonna yeah. be. It's gonna be amazing. It's gonna be cool to hear. Like I still have the noise from last year's engine. Like still, like I can still like recall it in my head. Like I'll sh I should be able to tell the difference. Yeah, yeah. Definitely, so of course. Like that, that uh, the, the Mac Honda last the Honda's year. The for sure. <laughs> <laughs> it's a crazy rumble it's amazing <laughs> but see, red bull especially is going to be interesting because they're like got that low 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 speed corner grip for and monaco yes for monaco so yeah. another big rumor for monaco which is uh evolved actually not so much a rumor is that uh the fia wants and i believe they have and are going to implement Real-time tire pressure monitoring for the race. Jesus. Why? Why is it not doing that already? Right? The teams do. The teams do monitor the tire pressure in real time. But the, as we saw from last year, remember there was that sort of little mini scandal. Yeah. Where uh, 
the FIA has uh, guys that will go out with a manual thing and just check tire pressures on the grid <laughs> before yeah. the before the yeah. race starts. They just yeah. pick two or three cars and just check a couple of tires and see the pressure. But through the data bus, the FIA's data system that they set up at every track, mm -hmm. the teams have to send real time tire data through that system, unadulterated, straight to the FIA for the whole weekend. And Pirelli. And per yeah, I guess Pirelli as well, because yeah. Pirelli have been the ones that uh, have been criticized, I guess, through all this, because they've increased the tire pressures beyond the minimums or whatever what they what they well, beyond what the teams what the want teams to want to use right yeah. and uh apparently some of the teams have found a way around it two teams for sure and ferrari possibly as well okay two teams for that we think is that, that this is a thinks. pressure thing that everybody's been talking about the air pressure thing yeah there's so a, what, so what are they doing how, how are they gaining with that? the speculations are that the teams the two teams for sure are the red bull and the toro rosso because they're they're gripping it up on on those corners. Okay. They're doing it faster than everyone else, and um, there's a few speculations that at least one of the teams are using some double walled tire rims, so that they can hide pressure in there. There, the, the gain that's being seen is two to two and a half psi, something like that. So not huge, but something like fifteen percent, maybe something like that, in uh, around ten ten to fifteen percent. Remind me what exactly more PSI within a, a tire lets Low, you have. Lower PSI gives you more grip because oh, okay. the tire sits softer, softer, flatter on the road. Uh, okay. So imagine like a, like a bike tire, like yeah. super super hard inflated. Yeah. You yeah. want that to go fast, like on the road. You yeah. Know, yeah. Like hard to be like zzz and just slide along. But if you're gonna take the same bike and climb up some rocks with it, or yeah, you want to okay. now do some super we, grip. Okay, we gotta understand. You that let this... some air out, and the, the tire will sit flatter, and you can you just get more grip because right. more of the tire surface is on the on the ground. Okay. This, this affects though, uh, Mike, and and, and then maybe this is why. Um, just want to put in context, like what's context? Why some of the teams were like vocal to Pirelli, like about this, like even uh, Roman Grosjean. You know, the star of the first two races for fin for finishing so high up with the highs. Yeah. He was saying, like, hey, they raised these temperatures on us, or these uh, pressures on pressures, us, yeah. and now we can't get a hold of the tires, this and that. Be it's because... Grosjean was a bit... He was, oh, this car is undrivable! Yeah. It, it, it goes hand in hand with more than you would think. It's not right. just it's not just a, let's let's break the tire down a little bit, and, like, and, 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 and it's an immediate gain. Mm -hmm. No, if you're planning to run the tires with, like, that much of a lower pressure, right? then you also make adjustments to your suspension. You also make adjustments right. to, ev to, you know, to, to camp, things like camber of mm -hmm. the tire, like, you know, how, yeah. how, how the tires are like that. Right. Um, you make it, – it goes also hand-in-hand hand with even engine mapping and engine modes because even though a, a, a lower-pressured – a tire maybe may grip to the certain uh, i mean and i'm sure everybody's experiences if you've ever like had like a slow leak on your bike tires mm -hmm. you know that you start to go slower slower because so uh, uh, more surface area is touching the ground right and and just the composition so it starts to kind more of resistance right more yeah so you need to compensate for that with higher torque higher power to 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 kind of drive you that and if what they're looking to do is attack the corners a certain way mm -hmm. The way that you would like kind of map your your power delivery around that corner would be different if you're like right. like dealing with like lower pressures. Okay. And yes, it, this is only like two psi or whatever, but in, in the world of F1, where everything is like to the limit, yeah. it makes a big difference. You think it makes as a percentage where the I think it's somewhere around eighteen to twenty two is where they're supposed to be racing at something like that. They increased it for three to four psi this year, but uh, I don't know what Paul Henry and what. Pirelli seeing, saying is that they're not seeing that from most of the cars at the start of the race. They're going to start real-time monitoring. And another speculation is that possibly Ferrari had used was preheating the tire rims and, and wheels. <laughs> so they, they so, somehow used... There's a speculation Fucking that perhaps Ferrari. perhaps Ferrari had somehow <laughs> vented or directed some of the brake heat okay. through into the, into the rims. And then you fill up your tires to whatever PSI. And then you vent your brake heat normally mm -hmm. out into the open air as you would. And your tires will cool down. 
So the, and therefore, you, therefore lowering the pressure as well that way. And both of these methods are using double walled rims, which I believe that is proven that well, no names have been given in any articles or leaked stories or whatever <laughs> that it's been done and that the FA is going to monitor and I guess change the regulations to disallow double walled rims mm. and somehow word the rules to dis disallow the heated rim thing. Apparently it's not against the rules. There's no rule against it, but I guess it's against the spirit of racing and whatnot. There's only one team doing it now, so they just want to stop it before it turns into like a whole it's one of those adding things that, like, another thirty thousand dollar system to the, like the, it's one of those things that if, if they want to patch it up right now in the middle of the year they probably won't issue any new laws but they like issue one of those like the um like like the, those things that charlie whiting like puts out like a technical, technical directive. directive yeah 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 exactly yeah. so yeah there's that's really some, interesting some so tricks. but 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 so so what about do you, do you know about what the red bull was, was doing like so i think it, it was speculated that they were the ones with the double walled rims but not really sure how that how it worked but some sort of system that they could keep the pressure between the rims and then somehow pump it back into the tires afterwards oh my god <laughs> yeah i don't know i don't know how that they would be so ridiculous facilitated moving the pressure from yeah. one chamber to the other i don't know I couldn't find any info on that, but it's coming to an end anyway. <laughs> so whatever. If, if it was Red Bull and Toro Rosso, the, that advantage is gone anyway. Yeah. And uh, I guess the heated tire and rim thing that allegedly Ferrari was doing will also be stopped this weekend. And I, I think there's going to be some sort of um, technical meeting this week because it's also been announced that the decision on head protection will be made before this race for next year will be made uh, i believe Monica. during the press conference i think it's going to be huh. probably thursday during the press conference with, the, with the team representatives or whatever yes yeah uh yeah i guess that's um i don't know yeah the, the fia is it's going to happen i believe yeah. but they still haven't uh, there's no like even rumor speculation if it's going to be like the mercedes Halo, the Red Bull Halo, or the Red Bull Canopy, the Ferrari Halo. Yeah. And there's still even there's still uh, some sort of news that Ferrari's coming with a hinged version of their Halo oh this God. weekend for to test out during the free practice. Right. They got a second version because the first one was fixed, so you could pop it off in the uh, in the event your car flips over. <laughs> but it does look like we're gonna have some sort of head protection next year. I'm gonna guess. I'm gonna say right now it's probably gonna be a Halo probably mercedes's halo because it just looked a little more slick but they haven't actually like produced i don't think yeah, i don't think they've shown it yeah. in public but yeah. i think they've it's been shown i don't think they have used it on track were you guys yeah. but it's not going to be that screen because of the rain and all that bullshit. you guys were talking about last week and i thought it was a really cool idea it's like this is sort of the area that you have to make like on top of the car, the cockpit, right, right, right on top. It's like you, this is the area you have to play with to to protect your driver right. uh, in terms of like having a, like a windshield or yeah. like some sort of yeah. head yeah. protection. Now, do you think it's actually going to go that way, or is it going to be like no, it's got to be like of this formation? It's, it has to be very specific. Well, that's what I'm saying. The the FIA decision is coming. I oh, believe I Thursday. Oh shit! Okay. The official decision for yeah. next year of what's and what, gonna, whatever they what's say, they're gonna be. Yeah, they're gonna like basically like make a, a spec for it and a standard that everybody has to follow, and they're all gonna look the same, and it's it's gonna be horrible. It's no. also been, uh, <laughs> I guess, leaked or whatever that uh, they're not thinking of steel anymore. They want to use titanium because the steel would have been something like another thirty kilos. Too heavy. Oh, Much too God. heavy. Yeah, it's way so too heavy use for one. Titanium tube instead. <laughs> And that's all we know but well, i guess we're gonna find out this week but it looks like it is gonna happen and it's not gonna be an option mm -hmm. for the drivers that wanted it to be an option no it wouldn't be it would not be to begin yeah. with because then then you start uh, <clears throat> if you give the drivers an option then no drivers will take it. Yeah, well, yes. Yeah, so no, no, drivers drivers no, no drivers will take it because if the moment that one driver says they're not going to take it, then he's he's already making his car faster because maybe. there's there's not maybe there's an advantage to the halo. Maybe you can uh, use it for some advantage. They're going to use it for some sort of advantage. Yes, they yeah, fine. Anything yes, possible. They, yeah, they'll find a way. You know, fill it up with candy or whatever. Use it for <laughs> whatever. <they're gonna> <laughs> it'll be some, some kind of advantage. Yeah. If it's, yeah, whatever. It's going to happen. Uh, but we're going to find out this week. 
Well, that's good. Yeah, cool. This weekend's race. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. Final Wait, thing. Do we have anything else to say about testing? Yeah. Testing? No. no I don't okay. know. This, yeah. yeah. Sort of Outta going here. back and forth between both. Yeah. Possible rain on Sunday. Yeah. What's 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 oh, the weather looking like, uh, Mike? Let's uh, pop it up, guys. Yeah. 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 Oh, let me just find it. Yeah. yeah. It looks interesting. Could be cool to see some rain, since it's always Monaco Grand Sunday. Prix. If you are new to F1, this is Sunday rain. This is one of the things. What's the difference between Sunday's rain and Monday's rain? Uh, it, well, is Monday is solid dotted. rain with small clouds, and Sunday has big clouds with spotty rain. Okay, check that out. <laughs> yeah, click on Sunday and see what's up. Yeah. Sunday, Sunday, sixty-nine percent chance of humidity. Oh, it doesn't go. Yeah, so it's, it's not gonna go. It's not gonna go over fifty percent. But the, the race, the highest local time chances is around, around the race time. Yeah. yeah, actually, yeah. Huh. But we'll see. It's still quite a ways away. But even if like the it gets rained on like a few hours beforehand, yeah, if it starts that's wet, totally going to affect it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. absolutely. And I, I feel like with Monaco, you'd want it to be like a nice dry race. Oh, not, yes. not to say well, that it wouldn't be exciting otherwise, but. Like it's one of these like windy, quick turning ones, and if everyone's got to kind of go yes. half this pace, going in and out of the tunnel, right? But then there's like some of the most monumental, like career making moments, have happened at like tracks in the wet conditions, mm -hmm. and yeah. it's always the most exciting races. Yeah, yeah, and out of that group, Monaco in wet conditions, just then you get to see like. Who's got who's, the biggest got what? balls of them all? <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. Seriously, the, the whole reason why, like at the very early, mo like at, at the very beginning, like of his career, when Senna was put into like an F1 car, he was he he basically bought his way to an F1 car. He was, let's remember, kids. Senna was a pay driver. Uh, he he bought his way into like a shitty like back back marker team, mm -hmm. and um, Monaco that year. He almost won the race if it hadn't been black flagged, but he was like on its way. Like he worked his way from the back of the grid in the rain because he was the only one that could find the grip on the track, and that's what everybody knew. Like, yo, this guy is a serious yeah. business. Oh. So, really, I mean, I've seen it a million times too. And anyone who hasn't seen that, there's a clip, an onboard clip from 1990 of Senna just fucking plowing his way through Monaco, passing everybody. Mm. Check it out. Find it online. Watch it over and over again. <laughs> over and over again. We can't show you because... Fucking Bernie. FOM will take down the video. But, but okay, let's... let's just just one, one thing. I mean, before we started like, talking about how cool Monaco is and all that, um, now that we're talking about the weather and how it might race, so we're looking at it here. And actually, like, this... So this has stayed like pretty much normal. I remember somebody posted on, on Reddit uh, a few days ago what the weather forecast was looking like for Monaco. And it was still, like, even back then, it was showing rain for Sunday. This is still show, right, showing rain for Sunday. So, I don't know. Hopefully, like, hopefully it stays like that. I want to see a, a wet Monaco uh, for, yeah, for, sure. for many reasons. But, okay, let's think of the last time that uh, the rain in Monaco. Do you remember what that was? That was Monaco, the 2008 Monaco Grand oh, Prix. Wait. Yeah, 08 was the last time. So, we haven't seen a, a wet Monaco Grand Prix in like eight, some eight, eight years, years now, yeah. yeah. Wow. So it's it's been it's been in like I've I've actually been looking forward to that mm. in, in watching the, the Monaco Grand Prix every year. I've been like, yeah, like hopefully it'll rain, but no, it doesn't. Uh, for, over the past eight years, clearly. But when it did rain eight years ago, it produced a surprise victory uh, of Lewis Hamilton actually taking that race. Wow! From the th the second row, uh, Kimi Raikkonen and Felipe Massa back then teammates of Ferrari had uh, landed first and second mm -hmm. and then lewis threw a bunch of the stuff uh, the, that happened while the track was drying out the the, the grand prix started wet mm -hmm. and then it dried out so wow. that because yeah that those changing conditions produce all kinds of strategy possibilities mm -hmm. uh starting in the wet is amazing to see because you see like the drivers really driving the hell out of the cars right. the ones that can find the grip they will then, then you see you see like mm -hmm. a great performance so if it if it, if it's wet, like actually, you know what? Let me show you this. Uh, go to Wikipedia right now. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, yeah. Yeah, let's go to Wikipedia and just just look for Monaco Grand Prix. Yeah. 
And for our listeners, I invite you to do this when you're home as well. Okay, so yeah, go back to like uh, to where it shows you like who okay, who won every yeah, no, just by year. Yeah, here. Look at that. The last three Monaco Grand Prix have been won by Nico Rosberg. Wow. Like, yeah, right? I didn't expect that. <laughs> he does live along the circuit, does he not? Yes, that's, yeah, he, he, that's, <laughs> that's his actual hometown. Yeah. Um, but let me just show you, like, just a couple of these. So, in, in, these, in these ones that Nico Rosberg won, just click on the race report, of just like a couple of them. Okay, scroll down midway, uh, and it should show you. Oh, th this one doesn't have it. Okay, go back, go back one out. Go, go, go to that one. Where it shows you like who led every lap. So go down. Oh, <laughs> it doesn't. It doesn't have this one. Oh, jeez. Oh, there it is. It's, it's actually like hidden. Click the the show yeah. lap leaders. There you go. See, Nico Rosberg led laps from start to finish. Go back out. Like go go back to like the list. Go yeah. Do the same with that one. Nico Rosberg from wow. start to finish. <laughs> right. And click click mark. Yeah the yeah that one. Just one, like this one, uh, the, the Vettel one in 2011. What did he do? Show, yeah. Mostly start to finish with a little bit of, uh, of action in between. Whereas, yeah, but he still like start, started from pole and finished. Except in, 20, in 2008 when Lewis won. Oops. Oh, yeah. So it's, what you're trying to prove is this, this is the least passingest track. Yeah. Look at, look, at how, look at what that looked like. From More beginning to end, race. yeah. Robert Kubica, remember we talked about him last time. He mm -hmm. led an, a bunch of laps, then back to Felipe Massa, then Lewis Hamilton for the mm -hmm. end. Anyway, it, so produces some some changing of action, and this was this was when the track started to to dry out. Anyway, it's it, it is better when it rains in Monaco because it's already like hard to overtake to begin with because mm -hmm. of the street circuit, because of the tight corners, because it's the slowest track of the year. Um, uh, so yeah, that's. Uh, I think that it's if, if we can look forward to a wet Monaco Grand Prix, it's going to be amazing. It's going to mm -hmm. be yet another great race of this great season. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> One of the longest running races that there is, I think, if not the, I think the yeah of, of the Grand Prix Grand Prix. So, scroll down this list, see how far this one goes to the Grand Prix. It might stop at fifty, but no, it keeps no, going. It keeps no, going. no, they started in like the twenties, yeah. Okay, so not continuous, but 1929 was well, the first. They, they had they had a bit of a war. Yeah, a little bit of a war. <laughs> <laughs> they had to. 29, 30, up to 37, 38, 38 to 47, 49, 51, 53, 54. Every other year had a race. But yeah, so a little bit of a threat, though. Mm -hmm. The bit of news this week, everyone knows. That we just talked about is an extremely tight circuit. Yes. A very tight tight circuit, some tight corners, and a tight city with no space. And uh, even the track even changed a little bit last year because the prints along, I, I believe, near the Tabac corner on, on the lower. So the, yeah, the, so this was the previous configuration. The lower straight before, just before the swimming pool. Somewhere around there, the prince had himself a car garage built. Yeah. That um, had to move one of the fences, change the corner a well, bit. Well, let's look at what it looks like now today. Like, so that that was the corner before, and look at what it looks like today. So, oh no, go, go back. Yeah, you'll show it like at the top of uh, of of the. Yeah, there you go. There, that's what it looks like today. So there is a bit of a shortening of, and the pit, change a bit. Yeah. So the piscine, the the pit, the pool area, that court, the the uh, chicane outside of the coming out of the tunnel has been moved back, and uh, the other the. The Nouvelle Chicane. Yeah, the new one. <laughs> but uh, so what's happening now is this man named Michel Boeri, who is the president of the Automobile Club of Monaco, mm -hmm. uh, he was talking to the local newspaper. And apparently there's a big real estate development being planned by the local government that's going to build some restaurants, some museums, mm -hmm. um, some shops, all down by the port, they call it like the new port area or something like right. that. And it may affect the race somehow. So we'll see. That's all the news there really is, but it seems like a, there's a serious sort of development. And anyway, the, the land where they want to develop this is where they have the TV uh, TV village, whatever they call it, in F1. Mm -hmm. And we kind of talked about this. They have bring in like eight or ten... Uh, 18 wheelers full of TV equipment to broadcast these races takes up a lot of space uh, I don't know 
so yeah so uh, this project and like, this guy Boyeri, like a lot of people think that that he's scaremongering that he, he yeah that's that, what it seems like a bit yeah bec- but he, he's pushing for something what he says he wants to build is that yes like that uh, they want to rehabilitate the uh the, the, the port the port uh, yeah now the, he, la nouvelle port or something they want to call it because here's what happens if you see like the old old style like you know from the 60s and 50s pictures of monaco when it was like beautiful and like you know really like real glamour like real exclusive whatever and you look at pictures of the same like you know skyline or harbor now like everything has been basically covered. All the like beautiful yeah. buildings, like you can't see them from, um, from the Met anymore. Like everything is being remodeled, and they sort of like in this in this grand remodeling that has, that has happened over the years. Of course, um, they've kind of forgotten about the the old port, the, the actual like port that used to be like the the commercial port. But now nobody is like getting like stuff. Yeah, nothing comes by a boat yeah. anymore. Um, so they want to re- redevelop that area, like bring some a bit more of an at- attention to there. Uh, they're saying that like it's the project, like with this museum or whatever. Uh, it's it's but but it's all this guys. Like what uh, Joe Sayward was reporting on his on his uh, blog is that yeah. what they really want to do is they want to basically like yes have like a whole like litany of buildings like side by side like these these uh museums and whatever and on top build of course offices and condos that's <laughs> yeah that's what everybody wants the caroli and, group and, that's and a company. bunch of like parking space obviously and some storefronts they just want to add to the storefronts but here's how they're they're, they're planning for example like that museum part of the proposal is that this company apparently will take care of it and like will sort of like help manage it for a number of years. And but then after that, then what? Yeah. Yeah. Then what? What, what do you think what is gonna do? happen? What yeah. do? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, it's gonna. It's just probably just gonna turn into some some other like, Anyways, yeah, you know, a bunch of lofts. You know, you don't have the to, lofts. You don't, at you don't the have museum. to be scared about the race anyway. It's, it's not gonna <laughs> go anywhere. This track's being changed. Even uh, in the two thousands, they moved mm. the whole brand new pit lane. The tra- the track can't change completely with the whole new pit lane. I think uh, it's been changed a lot of times over the years. Monaco is probably one of the safest it's countries in essence. the F one calendar. Yeah, it's uh, F one needs Monaco, and Monaco kind of needs F one. Yeah, that's one of the things. It's, it's just it's pretty badass. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty badass. Yeah, I don't think they're actually under any threat, and this and the, no. the, the whatever the 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 royal family won't let it happen, like to actually like tamper too much with this, but. It's what it what it's gonna happen is probably like they they will change some of it probably not to the detriment of the race itself but there's just gonna be like more apartments to buy there that you can see a bit of the Grand Prix at. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, it's probably know. this type of story we see a lot in the F1 world is uh, putting out feelers probably they just get a little bit of opinion of what people th- if people freak out about yeah. the news or if they're like oh yeah, that's cool you know I'm gonna get some new new places to eat. <laughs> maybe they'll a bit of, maybe they'll bring a KFC. Yeah, you get people from both ends, but yeah, I don't know. Don't worry about the race. Yeah, but there might be some new fancy buildings over there by the end of the the last few corners. <laughs> I don't know. I'm excited though for this race. Holy shit! One of my I favorites. Who's uh, who's gonna take it? And then that means Canada's coming up right behind it. Yeah, right. Lewis, Lewis, okay. Lewis, Lewis? Gonna, Lewis, gonna take it. Woof. A boah, boah. No, <laughs> no, no, Kimmy. No, I. Jeez, uh, I think that. Uh, I don't want to be like one one of those guys that jumps on the on the bandwagon or whatever. But you know, I'm jumping. The, the, the Red Bulls are looking strong mm. in the corners, in the tight corners. Right. There might right. be something that the Ferraris are had been working on. I think they are. Be- because the the difference in between the the top power units is not going to count as much in Monaco, I think I think Ferrari are going to try to like be creative, be cre- but hopefully they're creative like in a way that it works because clearly their strategy was not the ideal the last time out. <laughs> You probably just need another smoking tent. Yeah, you yeah right. Yeah, they, not enough smoking tents. Yeah, if you have another one, it kind of like. It switches it up a bit, right? Th- th- you know, then you can like turn it into a, like a little meeting room where you can, <laughs> you know, <laughs> discuss things in Italiano. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. I, th- I think Lewis takes it. Yeah, I think he probably got laid at the film festival last week. Yeah, He's gonna show up nice and relaxed. <laughs> 
<laughs> Show everybody what's good. And uh, what about Verstappen? Do you think he's going to have another another good race, or or was his sort of success in the last I don't race? Know. I, don't know. A I, th- I think to it me, depends, it depends how uh, how tricky they are with the two tire pressures. Right. If it was even then. Right. And how uh, if he if he's one of the dudes that gets the new engine. I yeah. If it is any good. Yes. To begin with. If it doesn't blow up. <laughs> so a lot, a lot of variables. You know as what? Al- I think as always. I think all things considered, like all, all things being equal, rather I should say, all things being equal in the Red Bull team, Ricciardo is going to have an edge over mm. Verstappen this race in particular. Mm. Uh, yeah, I think even for the next handful of races, just yeah. being used to the car. Uh, I mean, the Verstappen team, has had that. that being at home. He's, he's yeah. had that crash again going against him for Monaco for trying yeah, to Monaco, push it too yeah. hard. Yeah. He crashed the hard last yeah. year. Yeah, he cried. It was a big one. Yeah, it was. It was one. Yeah, it was one of the big crashes last year. Uh, so he still has that I against him. Dead. I think uh, it, up. maybe because Ricardo has have has had more of an experience around this track. But then again, yeah, like then again, he, he he's he's the wild card, isn't he? Like really, we don't know how Max Verstappen is gonna is gonna perform. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, you, I remember actually. Funny enough, last year's podcast about yeah. Monaco. Okay, yeah. And you were saying that like this track favors the experienced, not yeah. not necessarily the ones who are the fastest. Right. But but really, and I if I'm not if I'm not mistaken, you were like Alonso is going to do very well on this track. I'm yeah. not sure how he did he last didn't, year. Uh, but like <laughs> you were you were I, I remember you were convinced. <laughs> that he was just like gonna rip it up, and I think because uh, yeah. this was like the year of like the Honda just like taking a big old dump on the yeah. street. Um, <laughs> but yeah, that was something I remembered. So I'm thinking that like it's probably gonna be one of the veterans. Um, I think obviously like Hamilton, Rosberg is up there. I mean, Rosberg's won the last three years for Christ's yes. sake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Lewis is gonna want to rectify that for sure. Yeah, he's uh, uh, he's out for blood. He's out for blood. Let's just mm-hmm. hope they crash again and something dramatic that happens. Would be so good, right? <laughs> that would be the best. The best they could do is give us another Grand Prix sans Mercedes. Mm. You know? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It was seriously last race was so fucking exciting. Yeah, just because we didn't know who was gonna win. We just, we just didn't. We had, we had no clue, yeah. right? Because before it was just like, oh, it's a, is it Lewis? No, is it? Ro- oh no, it's Rosberg. It's Rosberg. Yeah, but <laughs> yeah, ex- exactly. Yeah, it was it was a fifty fifty toss up. Yeah, it could have been either of them. A wet Monaco, though. Even if nothing happens in terms mm. of you know the Mercedes breaking down or taking mm. each other out, I think it could give a wily old fox of a driver or a very experienced youngin, right? Or or a, or, or somebody with the impetus enough to like. Try and find that grip out there. I think is I think we could be rewarded with a, with a very yeah. good another good entertaining race. Yeah, mm. for sure. <laughs> Exciting! I can't can't wait. Well, okay. So, how do you think qualifying is gonna go though? Like not let alone win, like okay, fine. Winning the race is, is gonna be a different situation, but qualifying. Quick question: uh, Is uh, the winner usually from pole? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's usually a procession, as they call it. Okay. <laughs> yeah. In the dry. Yeah. In the dry. In the dry, in the dry it is. In the dry, dry it is. Mm. Remember? I don't know. I think Mercedes is up front. Yeah. Um. I don't know. I think Red Bulls are going to be up there. Williams continue what they've been doing. I think they'll have no problem doing that. Ferrari. I don't know. Bit of a wild card. For this type of track, we don't know. They sort of being like up and down this year. Don't really know what's. Uh, mm-hmm. Are what, they in the really the, the what's really happening? points? Ferrari, the second or third, they must be. Yeah, right? they're still second, but with uh, Red Bull creeping up. Right, oh, yeah. right there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I believe uh, isn't uh, Ricardo ahead of Vettel now for the year? I don't know. Look in it points? up. Check it out. I think so. Yeah. I think he might be. Yeah. F1, Twitter, um, uh, I don't know. Yeah. Another thing that happens like behind the scenes in uh, in Monaco, as as Daddy has kind of pointed out, pointed towards is, is there's a lot of um, of meetings. There's a lot of big shots that have a lot to say in, in, in F1, but like big stakeholders from anywhere from like the big promoters. Like you know, there's gonna be some there's gonna be some Rolex people there. There's gonna be some. Uh, 
yeah. uh, Aston Martin is probably gonna make an appearance. Um, you know that they, they, they are like they're gonna want to like. Apparently, like one of the things that Aston Martin is, and this ties up to the whole Heineken deal, and I guess we'll go we'll go up to this, is that they Heineken is is apparently working on doing something with the Bond movies, and the Bond movies are very closely related to uh, the Aston Martin brand, mm-hmm. and if they're also like working on like a side angle with F1, maybe they're gonna be the the name that is gonna bring or help bring Aston Martin back back to F1. Which it's it's. I, I, we'll we'll get we'll get back to this uh, Heineken thing because I I, I got yeah. a few a few different <laughs> uh, things to do with it. But yes, it, 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 there's gonna be a lot of political stuff going on. The, the the meetings are gonna be endless for some people. But that's that's why they can say fully that by Thursday, Monaco, they are gonna know for sure or like what what it, what the head protection is going to look like right but it's there's going to be more 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 in the works they're going to start like so the 2017 rules are going to get uh, rubber stamped because there's going to be like another like one of those like big commission meetings with all the big hitches um but you can pretty much expect again that uh sergio marchione said uh, you know it's going to be there bernie's going to be there always um the, the the guy from Mercedes, the uh, Doctor Z, uh, he's gonna be there. All those guys again are gonna continue their round of meetings, mm-hmm. and their their whole fight with Bernie, like of, of trying ba- basically like, what they're trying to do. Everybody kind of knows it by now. Is they're gonna try to still fight. Like they're gonna find. A, they're, they're trying to find ways to get rid of Bernie. Yeah, <laughs> they're trying to find way, or at least. To make Bernie less powerful or his power count less, right? Yeah. Uh, in terms of the F one decision making process, cool. they're they're gonna keep pushing for that, and I think that we're gonna see some very interesting developments coming out of this of of this week, like from the political side. I think mm. a bunch of meetings are gonna happen in Monaco as they always do, that are gonna affect. F1, as we know it, like at least starting from the next year, yeah, yeah. 2017. Yeah, the rules, yeah. This, so it, all of this aero stuff is definitely gonna get ironed out. All this engine stuff is gonna get ironed out. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna be at least more certain about what the future of of, of next year's championship is gonna look like for sure. Next week, yeah, yeah. By the end of this weekend, By the end of this we're gonna weekend. have a lot of info. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I'm I'm looking forward to that as much as I'm looking forward to the race. Like, there's gonna be some tasty stuff coming out. I'm sure. Yeah, I can't wait. <laughs> So see you, you see y'all guys at uh, Betty's on Sunday. Oh come, right, yes. Come hang see, out, watch the yeah, race we're doing us. this. If you are, we in will Toronto. be at Betty's in Toronto, King Street East, two um, thirty, three p.m. No, three p.m. Uh, two thirty uh, King East. <laughs> the address? Yes, two thirty is the ad- no two thirty, two forty King East. Two forty, two forty King East. <laughs> Betty's. You can't miss it anyways. They got a big big blue sign. Come upstairs and hang out. We'll uh, be there watching the race. Yeah, with check a bunch out of, uh, more info on our website, uh, vladofever.com slash F1 dash at dash Betty's. And it's AT, not the ad symbol. <laughs> <laughs> so, F, yeah, F, F1 at Betty's is a thing that we do for our new listeners. Uh, if you're within the Toronto area, come down, check it out. We screen the races. Not all of them live this week. This weekend's race is not going to be a live screening of the race, but lots of people show up. It's lots of fun. Yeah. New fans, as much as old fans of the sport, yeah. coming up. Um, we and we, yeah, we we do hope to see you to see everybody there uh, this Sunday at three o'clock for the pre-show. Four o'clock, four we're going to start the race. the race. That's right. At Betty's, but you got to come for the pre-show. Yes. Yeah, no, it's always a good old time. Oh, and yeah. Betty's Betty's is doing a half pr- half price uh, wings and half price nachos. That's right. Yeah, for the fun crowd. Right. And uh, we'll be back in like five minutes, I guess. We got some uh, Heineken updates. Yeah. Some circuit updates for the circuits that uh, might be holding some races soon. Mm-hmm. Let's talk about those. Ferrari. Cool. Euro season kickoff. Did you do it? Yeah, we're on. The Euro season kickoff we're, started. Well, it started, started last week, right? With the with, with Spain. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Actually, one thing that that I, that I found pretty interesting is uh, Jose Ward wrote an article in his little blog that uh, I guess I never really thought about it, but it, it's it's important. Like when the F1 teams finally make it to Spain, by that time, all the races have been flyaways, right, mm-hmm. uh, and all that. 
but then when they touch back in Europe, it's a, it's a kind of like a big thing. It's a it's, it's like a it's homecoming a, almost. Yeah, it's just, it's a homecoming, and you get to see a bunch of the people. I mean, for the flyaways, apparently only like the most the more like hardcore F one like people like to some the tracks like they only bring like the you know the need to are you needed there yes or no if if mm -hmm. only if yes is the answer then you go um whereas for spain a boatload of people that are like involved with f1 actually like go to that to the zoo that is <laughs> the, the, the f1 paddock in the european season you know lots of people like for, you know it, just even counting the just the the amount of people that they can bring because of the motorhomes uh right. yeah. around just the amount of people that each team can bring goes up like by a lot and it, and there's a, a real feeling of like like you said like homecoming like mm -hmm. like uh, you see people that you that you didn't see since last year the last european race like the that people they stuff. can bring and the people they can host in the paddock as well all the guests oh, and yeah. their sponsored guests and family and all that stuff too that comes along yeah that's it, it, <laughs> their chefs it really does mark for <laughs> especially for the U europeans like it really does mark like the the start of like a now, now this season is fully underway like whatever happened and also things like parts are mm. easier to bring to you uh, yeah because yeah. Uh, any any development like now really we're getting into like the really like fast pat fast paced part of the season like right. the, the 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 European races they go almost back to back interrupted yes but with Canada here yeah. here <laughs> um, but somehow like in, to some people's minds like Canada also counts as part of the European season because it's always been embedded somewhere in between there always at least in recent times has happened right after Monaco um, so we can expect. As, like a bunch of new changes coming in terms of what the cars, uh, like, you know, the parts that, he, that, that the teams are coming, the the upgrades with the engines. Oh, the engine stuff we it. talked about in the first half. Yeah, it's a lot of big upgrades. It's 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 always cool. Like it really it really does feel like you know the year already has already started, but there's like almost like a second like start to the year now. Like now, like everybody's like gonna dust it off. All right, let's get to business. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, something I want to get out of the way too because we we sort of finished with this last week you put together the presentation about the the youngest drivers in f1 right i think it's from this past week or maybe it came out around spain there was an interview floating around online with uh, murray walker and jensen button mm -hmm. so i listened for to, channel four i believe it was yeah i think it was for channel four I, I was listening through that on youtube and uh i heard this fact at the time when he made his debut mm -hmm. in f1 he was the youngest British driver of all time, one of the youngest drivers ever. On top of that, there's an article here from January 24th, 2000, saying that he was age 20, 20 years and 53 days tied with Eddie Cheever, who I believe you did have on your list as number 10. No, no, he was the youngest, 10th youngest driver to start a race. Both Eddie Cheever and Jensen Button, 20 years, 53 days. My, my list was of youngest drivers to win a Grand Prix. To win a Grand Prix, okay. Oh, yeah. At the time as well, in his sixth race, Jensen Button was the youngest driver to ever score a point. He's also being overtaken. In Brazil, he's, uh, he got sixth place in his sixth race in F1. So he's the youngest guy to score a point at that time. And Jensen actually went to win a championship. No, he's one of the oldest. Yeah. He did, yeah. He's a, he is a world champion. And, uh, oh, yeah, now he's one of the oldest on the grid. 16 years experience jeez it's crazy he was yeah, showing showing no, no signs of slowing down really he was he was close like close enough to 16 years to being 16 years old when he started f1 you know <laughs> now yeah. he's had 16 years of experience <laughs> jesus yeah, i just thought it was interesting i guess he was he but well our list is made last week mm. he's obviously being bumped off <laughs> off the bottom but he was there one time. Well, it took him. I mean, he he, he was in F one as a young, as a very young lad, but it took him a while to actually win his first Grand Prix. That's why I think he didn't quite make the list of youngest Grand Prix winners. Right. Right. Yeah. 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 But um, we were talking about deadlines and 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 things and these meetings that are coming up and and, and you know things that are going to be announced uh, for for a Thursday. Well, for. <laughs> uh, for the Thursday press conference meeting, uh, or sorry, the the, the the Thursday press conference with the with the team principals or the team's representatives, yeah. Um, not for this Grand Prix, but 
two weeks for the Canadian, for Canadian Grand Prix. For Canada. Yeah, that's when we can expect the official unveiling and the official announcement of what the F1 and Heineken partnership is going to be. So that's that's when they've said that they're finally going to announce it. Um, like we like we were saying in our previous segment, Heineken coming to F1, it's been creating a lot of buzz. It could it could be tied like people have strung the nets already to tie it to a potential uh, Aston Martin comeback. Mm. Um, people are saying that it's going to have an impact on how the fans consume this sport as well. Or consume alcohol. I, oh, that's the thing. <laughs> <laughs> of course. <laughs> um, you said you said you had a couple of things on, on, on Heineken. A little bit. I know it's a $250 million deal. See, that's, that's, that's a weird thing. Over because seven years. I've heard, yeah, I've heard two, two things. I've, I've seen $150 million for... Um, for five years, and I've seen also 250 million for seven years. Maybe it's like one of those uh, conditional contracts that we were talking about. Drivers have. Yeah. It's, if the first five years go well, then they'll throw in an extra hundred million for the last two years. Yeah. Perhaps, and uh, ex- extend beyond there, right? Yeah. Both both things could be right for sure. Even if it's that. Yeah. Okay. It's it's all speculation again. Like there hasn't been an announcement yet. Yeah. But. So what were you, you going to say? So one of the things that Heineken has already, like you know, the people that are in the know or whatever, like part of the announcement that they're gonna that they're gonna do is, is that Heineken, as a global spon- or global partner, or whatever they end up being of mm-hmm. F one, is also gonna be doing things to promote or help promote F one as a sport through social media and the new channels, digital stuff, right? This could also include like. Wrap up, right up until like making things available online in some sort of way, shape, or form, some mm-hmm. sort of footage or something, additional F one content online in some in some in some way, shape, or form. Now, obviously, already like people have been thinking like, there. So they're basically. I, I saw a comment on Reddit and and one of these uh, threads about the uh, about Heineken that somebody was like, yeah, all it's gonna look like is. Taken down by FOM, now sponsored by Heineken. You know, like that's, <laughs> that's all that FOM have been doing with digital yeah. content, right? Yeah, <laughs> they, yeah their 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 uh, Twitter page is just gonna look like a bunch of like missing file like <laughs> <laughs> icon because uh, it's just an empty beer icon instead. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> how are how are they gonna reconcile Heineken's ambitions to bring F one over to the new media? Mm. Um, Keeping with, Bernie up. Well, yeah, with FOM's like current stance that everything everything must be taken down. Yeah, this yeah this could be a partnership that lays the grounds for something like that, or maybe mm-hmm. even, or at least lays the ground for um, more openness, at least, or at yeah. least FOM going in the right direction. Although I, I, I have to see it to believe it. You tell me that FOM is like changing their ways, right? I have to see it to believe it. There's rumors that F, that that FOM is also been changing their ways in terms of actually apparently the, v, doing VR stuff is gonna become like it's that they're already working on something. They've just they apparently been they have to being quiet about it and they're working on it more than they're being let off or mm. letting off. Yeah. So, uh, but again, going back to the Heineken thing, it could be good for the fans. But this money, you have you have to understand that the bulk of the whatever hundred and fifty or two hundred fifty million is gonna go to FOM directly. So this right. because this deal was right. This deal was was brokered through FOM, um, and yes. all the, the, FOM the team gonna, the teams aren't gonna yeah. see a lot of it. You're gonna oh, see mm-hmm. like yeah. the Rolex ads yeah. and the Pirelli ads. You're gonna see them on the the walls surrounding the track. Yeah. The DHL, bridges, same thing. The yeah, bridges over yeah. the track. You're going to see it on the billboards and stuff like that. But uh, some seeing is believing type mm. of uh, evidence, which I haven't actually seen, so I can't believe it yet, is uh, Heineken is a big football f- um, sponsor as well in the same way as F1. It's and Soccer for the Americans, but yes. Soccer, yeah. Football. <laughs> football. <laughs> and uh, they've put together this video last year called The Dilemma, which mm-hmm. apparently caused the sensation mm-hmm. and uh, brought in a bunch of new fans so i don't know i haven't got a chance to watch it yet but i've got it open here i'll check it out after the podcast 
and uh, see what I think, I guess. But it's, apparently, I guess if they can do something like that for F1, man, like it, it, it's, the, the thing about it's Heineken, Heineken is a very clever company. Years. They know that they're gonna have. It's a Dutch company too, so they know that they're gonna have a lot of uh, a ton of their own, like you know, the, their own nation is gonna be tuning into the sport, and it and it already has. Right. Like it, it, it changed. Uh, Max Verstappen changes viewership and, and we F1 saw that interest pile of front front page articles last week all yeah. the dutch papers overnight that it's, picture it's, it's, we showed last week but heineken right. the way that they do their advert uh, their 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 campaigning and their and their ad and their their pr stuff is like they they kind of do multi-channel stuff they do a bunch of shit at once that correlates mm. um in europe at one point they were even like talking about like opening uh, like heineken stores the same way that like starbucks has stores like where you can go and like have a beer but also like buy heineken merchandise buy a heineken mug like just really like <laughs> have a holistic approach that you deal like with marketing your beer but you're also about marketing like the heineken lifestyle and the heineken <laughs> related like licensed products yes right he- heineken bread <laughs> the heineken sandwich <laughs> a, a hein you know like an aston martin by heineken like is not like it, it could be something that they might be looking into so <laughs> <laughs> pick up a you, paper of the Heineken Times. Yeah. <laughs> what 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 I would be what I would definitely look forward to, Mike, and, and, and I'm sure w- work with me on this one. Oh, I'm there. I'm there, man. <laughs> uh having Heineken on the podium and instead of like spraying champagne, have him like just shotgun a beer. Like, <laughs> yeah. Shotgun <a> kind of Heineken. <laughs> See, See who can see, see you who can later, chug Shandong. it. Yeah. <laughs> see who can chug it first. Yeah. Add that extra level of competitiveness, yeah. even on the podium. <laughs> I mean, oh, every bit counts, really. <laughs> for every drop, yeah. every drop counts for Heineken. Um, there's another side of this. Obviously, we know that this deal was brokered via via Bernie, mm. and, yeah. and we're seeing more deals that are like from like. Bernie dealing with big names, big sponsors, uh, Heineken, uh, DHL, another big multinational, Rolex, again, big company, etc., mm-hmm. etc. Cetera, et cetera. Um, to bring money into F1, but a lot of people think that him doing that is like effectively like cock blocking the other, like the actual teams from getting some of that sweet, sweet sponsorship money. And if you think about how F1 and, and beer coupons. Yeah. Well, yeah. If it, how the advertising on on screen advertising mm-hmm. works um, for F1 right now is you have a bunch of billboards, right? And you have like advertising like also on like on the cars. There's they they're, they've been doing some stuff with like digital overlay ads, but for the most part like the way that you can get your product advertised on F1 right now uh, just by like when you think of just, you know, during the race during on the live feed. Um you put your sticker on a car or you look, you, you buy a billboard. Mm-hmm. The thing is that even if you're Mercedes, like as we've seen, you're not guaranteed coverage of just the Mercedes cars right. throughout the race. Right. So better bang for your buck. If you're thinking of actually just straight, like, um, viewing, like viewing time of your air time of your ad on the screen, you definitely go with Bernie because Bernie can assure you that for every race, your logo will be shown and, and multiple times. Mm. The teams cannot individually assure that. And because of that, we're seeing a lot of the potential sponsors that would have historically have gone to the teams, mm-hmm. go and deal with Bernie instead. And because Bernie has a responsibility to CVC of just giving them straight money, mm-hmm. and that has only mm-hmm. been like creeping up and up and up and up and up, a lot of people see these deals as, as again, just... The be- like the best thing. I mean, it's uh, no no fault of Heineken or anything. Like, and and they could be doing like something good for the sport by, uh, or at least for the fans. But is it sustainable from from a team's point of view? I don't think it is. Mm-hmm. And and like obviously like, but but that's that's just how it is in F one right now. That's this is just a sign of the times we live in. Right. F one like you know Bernie wants more and more money. He can only ask, or he see, he thinks that he can only ask the the amount of money that 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 he that he wants that he's going for from big companies because only big companies will benefit from the international reach of F one, mm-hmm. and that's that's how he's building his whole his whole his whole deal, right? right. So 
he has to he has to broker deals in that way that's going to favor him and he's going to favor CVC. He has absolutely zero incentive to look after the F1 teams other than, you know, I guess at the end of the day, if you don't have F1 teams, you don't have F1. But, right, yeah. But <laughs> <laughs> money's still pouring in and... I guess like, that's... no. You can still have a race without the without the cars. <laughs> but it, it's putting teams like on the other end of the spectrum, like uh, Sauber, uh, right? Yeah. In, in, in the complications that they are, I mean, I think that a team like Sauber to try to go out there and realistically expect to get some sponsors, some big sponsorship money, they have, they don't have like a, they don't have a chance. To have... <laughs> Come on, that's why they're there. That's why they're in the position they are right now. Yeah. Um. But yes, I mean, I, geez, uh, I think uh, I think that uh, that that we should uh, though mm. uh, chug some Heineken when we get to Montreal and then hear what what whatever whatever announcement they're gonna announce. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah well, hopefully it's good. Hopefully it's good for the fans, as uh, as the headlines point out. I don't know. I don't know. To me, whatever. If it doesn't help the teams, it doesn't help the teams. Whatever. I'm still gonna watch the racing. Exactly. Mm-hmm. As long as it helps me <laughs> as a fan. Yeah. <laughs> Look, looking forward definitely to that. Jeez, uh, uh, looking forward to Montreal for sure. Yeah, Absolutely. Throw, throw up that uh, gallery for a sec. Let's look at that for a few seconds. We'll ta- let's, uh, let's, this uh, one? Yeah, yeah, just give it a quick scroll while yeah, we yeah, talk yeah. for a sec. Somebody posted this on uh, Reddit today. R a a b s e n posted it. Just a bunch of pictures of uh, Montreal. Looks like uh, just today they started putting the track together. Some spots of rust there and need uh, wiping up. I think they've had, they have been. They usually start doing this like weeks in advance. I don't know. He said, I don't know. Anyway, they have started anyway. This, yeah. this is from today or yesterday. Some, uh, some fence over the grass there. Make sure nobody drives in the grass. <laughs> it looks uh, empty. It looks completely empty. Well, I mean, people can just go to this uh, right now uh, because it's a it's, it's a park that's open to the public. You can yeah, just take your bike track. there and and do the whole length of the track. Yeah, it's can, pretty cool. You can drive most of it too, I think. Yeah. So. And most of it, yes. The uh, for those that don't know, the the Canadian and the Australian track are very similar. They're both in the city park mm-hmm. on uh, semi permanent roads, sort of like bike path in the year. But they're almost like identical parks, really, right? The ones on the ocean, ones in the river, but. Mm-hmm. The ocean, ocean type river. <laughs> Looks like well, I mean, it's, it's need, the, 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 the other one is like not actually in the ocean. It's like it ha- it's it's bordering a lake, a, a man-made lake. Yeah. <laughs> the uh, this the island was there, this island was man-made. It was also man-made. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Looks like the uh, curbs there need a good painting at Canada. <laughs> they always do do like they 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 repaint everything from the Grand Prix. Yeah, which yeah. is nice. Yeah. To see. Well, there was a picture i don't know if we shot it last Happen. week or not. there was some pictures of spain as well where it was half painted they painted all the seats the grandstands they painted all kinds of shit you see no billboards up anywhere yet probably they're, they're waiting they're waiting for the last call, call last on whether or not it's going to be a heineken uh billboard <laughs> or a pirelli billboard you know <laughs> or rolex maybe or, yeah rolex. Or rolex yeah and so they actually take so, them down yeah like, oh wow they only really have them up for I guess that makes sense, right? Yeah, yeah. The wall of champions. Yeah, it's a public park, so nobody wants billboards there, right? Yeah, no. Yeah. Nobody wants billboards there during the year. Yeah. You see how much uh, damage gets done to those? Holy shit. Yeah. I need some paint for sure. Well, this is all part of like what, you know, in, in the agreement, in the most recent agreement with Montreal, we like, we saw that they have to have some guaranteed spending on keeping up the track. It's supposed to be, this, this stuff happens. It's supposed to be $40 million. It's supposed to build yeah. a new hospital new permanent pit lane facilities probably repave all the curbs it's because they, they say that these gar- that like these garage facilities are a bit too old they yeah and be. small too yeah. they're, they're sharing like half the, half the size of what uh looks like a bunker from <laughs> like fallout yeah yeah, yeah. exactly exactly <laughs> The uh, the teams uh, spruce them up a little bit. They put up their signs and stuff when they get there, but it's looking a little, a little old. And the hospitality and paddle club facilities also apparently. Oh, what does that say right there? Official champagne <laughs> of Formula One. No, that's VH gonna one. yeah, that's gonna have to get like that, that'll be scrubbed, <laughs> off. scrubbed off. A couple of the letters have already fallen off by themselves. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hard work going on under the stands. I believe, yeah, that's oh, somebody's uh, screwing around there, the old picnic table. This this is gonna be a great Grand Prix. Like after, I mean, I I can't wait to see what what uh, 
what's going to happen in Monaco. But you know that Monaco, because it's so different from all the, from all the other tracks, so to, you know, the slowest one, whatever. You go from the slowest else. to the fastest. Then, I then, love yeah, the, the and, contrast there as well. And then you go to, to Montreal, then, then, then teams are really going to let it, oh, I can't wait. I the can't. slowest to the second fastest, I guess, but the most open throttle disc or something like that. He- the second most. Heaviest or second heaviest on the braking. Yeah, one of those two. Yeah. Badass. I can't wait. Yeah. Yeah, so there's there's the gallery of the setup. It's going to happen. It's, it's happening. Well, None of the TVs, that giant TVs, not not up there. The jumbo. The jumbo train. <laughs> we were like over here for a bit, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. Right. yeah exactly yeah. right that's there. Exactly right there. Where we're at. That's where we made that super stereo video that we still haven't put together. Oh yeah, fuck. Well, no, we, we do another one. <clears throat> we're just gonna do like a thing. comparison Ooh, of the two last year. Yeah, this year. Ooh, yeah. yeah. yeah that's what I knew we were saving that for something. Yeah. <laughs> Stay tuned for that. Yeah, we'll back in a few weeks. We'll yeah, some, honestly, some cool I know stuff. that we said this last year around. If, if you've been listening for a very year, first of all, thank you, and second of all, like you, we did say that we were gonna have like a few more. Uh, features ready for Montreal, but this yeah. year we we actually will. We are Dude, going it's to. It's a thing. <laughs> it's happening. It's for it's for real. As far as far as these uh, circuits go, German Grand Prix, and a, a, a slight bit of news because it's coming back yes. this year. Yes. Um, it's been also again one of the longest runningest races of all time. It's uh, it's going to be in Hockenheim, but uh, there's some news uh, floating around this week that George Seller. He was the the leader, the head of the Hockenheim race circuit, whatever mm. whatever his job title is. He was he was as we said, like everyone shows up to Spain. Mm. He came to uh, talk to Bernie and do some business, try to sign some papers. Nothing got signed because uh, F one Bernie obviously wants a bunch of stuff from them. Yeah, he wants uh, and uh, app- apparently the uh, the alteration with the Hockenheim Nurburgring back and forth mm. is uh, still up in the air. I don't know. Oh, that, really? That's what Bernie wants, but I think Nurburgring doesn't have money anymore. It they they don't have money, and they're they are not as interested. They've actually yeah. saw like they have actually seen. They want to focus more on the WEC type yes, stuff be, because they they seen that bang for your buck or bang for your euro. Um, hosting the WC race has brought them way more money in terms of uh, the people that come in because you know even even though each ticket is cheaper they don't have to pay as uh, like as high of uh of, of hosting fees right and actually more like people. more people come yeah more, more people show up yeah and uh related to that i got some info on the french grand prix just one second but hockenheim wants a long-term deal they're trying they're trying to send that with bernie it seems like the the uh everything's kind of right right now so okay. i guess you could probably expect uh some sort of news on that but apparently since the start of grand prix racing there's only been two german grand prix that didn't happen oh, shit. and only two that didn't happen at the nearberg ring or hockenheim there were two in berlin can you can you pull that up actually just while i'm talking for a sec pull up the uh berlin grand german grand prix berlin it only ever happened twice i think in uh 1926 one of the original german grand prix and in formula one there was one formula one grand prix which was in 59 which was in berlin uh yeah there it is the third one this one here oh, that is the what yeah this was no. <laughs> for, for what? anybody that's listening that you're not watching look it up it looks pull, like pull a hairpin on your phone or something like that wow it's basically two, two hairpins four corners yeah two of them are basically like eh, like and one of them is not even numbered as a corner. <laughs> yeah, it was a, a four corner race, and uh, for some reason it was canceled in 1955. Well, I can see why. What? This is not a race. I can't call that a. Race. Come on, that's not a circuit. <laughs> that, that's something quite anima- uh, unimaginative and bland. 1955, it was canceled. I think it's because wait, this wasn't people it, died. Is it? Is it? Oh, I guess it was in '59. I mean, that was maybe that was part of the yeah that that last loop there. Oh my God! Look at this fucking wall. Yeah, that banking is insane. <laughs> it's, like, it's like from F Zero or some shit. <laughs> yeah. 1955 was canceled. Uh, I think that was the year that Mercedes pulled out, right? When uh, a bunch of people died yeah. in Monaco, oh. the crazy bad accident. And 2015, that was the other the other time the German race didn't happen. It was last year, but it's back. Don't worry. At least for now. The French Grand Prix, there's been uh, some big speculation about it coming back with uh, 
Renault having an F1 team now. And potential making some noise. Uh, French driver with Ocon. Yeah, doing better. So mm -hmm. They're doing better. Ocon is uh, making some noise in F1. There hasn't been a race for a long time. But uh, there's been some talk about having it at Le Sarth, at the Le Mans circuit. No, that's, that's not going to work. Yeah, so they've thought about it. The, the reasons they're giving is, is uh, one of them is that uh, they need to invest 17 to 18 million euro to fix the track, which they figure they're on, they only break even if they did do that. And uh, this is coming from President Pierre Filon of the uh, of the the circuit group or whatever the fuck it's called. Yeah. And uh, this is a very French answer. His other reason is that I think it would not bring anything. Sorry, that was a bad French accent, but that was, that was his quote. So it would cost us 17, 18 million euro. They'd only break even. And I think it would not bring anything. That was his reason. Bernie would love it if it was at uh, Paul Ricard. Yeah. You can put those sprinkles, his sprinklers up in action. But it's not going to happen. If you want to read about it, it's from dailysportstar.com. They had the uh, the exclusive on that story. But it's not going to happen. Yeah, French Grand Prix is not going to happen. So It's like, not going to happen at Le Sart, anyway. Yeah, it's, it's not going to happen. It's, at, and it's, gonna, it's not going to happen. Like, it might happen soon, but you got to think that... that if they have to add a French Grand Prix, they're, they're going to be looking at like chopping some other track. Right. Yeah, possibly. Which, I don't know. The, any, of them, any of them are up in the air. Mm. But I don't know. I wouldn't, I wouldn't whatever. Yeah. yeah. If it comes back, comes back. La Sarth is a badass circuit. We call the race F1 there. Yeah. But, it's long. Yeah, it's, but it's not, yeah it's, yeah, it's not meant for F1. It's so like it's going to be. Teams of, yeah, it would be cut shorter. They wouldn't. Oh, yeah. They wouldn't be going along the back straight or anything. No, it would have to be like a. It would be like a four. It would, if they can't make it a four kilometer track, they they probably won't make one more race there ever. Well, speaking yeah. of a four kilometer track, okay. the final piece of news I got is in Austria, mm -hmm. the Red Bull Ring, as it's known now. It's it's one of the shortest, if not maybe the second shortest. Yes. outside of Monaco. Had, well, we 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 covered that uh, in a couple a few podcasts ago when they were. Do right. some remodeling to it. Right. So there's a, just, I don't know, just a slight update on, on the uh, remodeling is that we said that the west, the west part of the circuit was probably going to undergo some remodeling. Yeah. To look more like that or something like, or this, to look a little bit more like that, like the big one. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So uh, the thing that's up in the air, and uh, I guess it's a local thing in, in Austria, it's, it's called planning consent. Okay. This is what the circuit needs. The, the circuit owners, which is obviously Red Bull, the Red Bull circuit. Mm -hmm. They want to restore it to five and a half to six kilometer length. But as you can see, like in this picture here, for people that are looking, so look, there's uh, there. Uh -huh. Yeah, there's some, there's a, I think it's a go-kart track and at the top, but there, there's some farms. That, there's, uh, yeah. yeah. There's some farms there. There's some modern considerations. Yeah, I, I, don't, I always found it so charming because you know how in every other city the the long like the long ass helicopter shot like you know goes through the city or like goes through like whatever's around. Over here, I remember one time like the shot started with like a bunch of cows grazing and then like like as it got because yeah, there's there's like legit like dairy farms around here. It was interesting what we saw in uh, Russia was the dolphins, black dolphins. Yeah. But so you see on the bottom left of that picture there, where it's sort of like that red and white, the one, yeah, the, okay, there, the red and white stripes there. So that is where they've built in the new chicane, mm -hmm. and the west part of the circuit goes out around there, like way out there, and I think comes up there where the, the go kart track returns over there. Oh, so what's shit. what's required from the local council, their local government, is called planning consent. So apparently they've been now given permission to build it they can pave all that make it safe set it up for a grade one whatever but the planning consent is needed to race on the circuit mm. so it's unfortunate and it's a lot of words that i'm saying right now but that west segment even though it's going to be rebuilt it might be used a few times a year for some manufacturer testing for some special events for okay. like a historic type of event but possibly the government's not going to allow a grand prix to happen there because of environmental as cows and whatever the people that live there now and all, all that kind of bullshit so we'll see though fingers crossed Last race <laughs> yeah fingers crossed because who wouldn't want to see this is the, Austri the austrian circuit everybody like the ice cream. a lot of people um want like, to see it restored if you, wa if you watch like, or like if you if you've been an f1 fan for longer like you know longer than i've been alive that sort of thing like for from since the 70s and whatever when they when they race there the in the full circuit like a lot of people say, like yeah, like it would be nice to bring this like the full circuit back. The full circuit, man. Yeah, yeah man. 
Yeah. Everybody wants it. It's, is there a limit? They, it is, they are bringing it back. It is being built back. Is there a limit to like the size uh, of a uh, F1 circuit? Uh, not not technically. I don't believe there is. Not technically, but practically there is. And, right. and the, the practicalities are defined by FOM. And really what they're looking for is they, they figured they, they figured a number of things that like would give like ideal like commercial time for like billboards really is oh, what wow. is what's going to yeah, determine so that is, is the, are the drivers going to pass by all the each advertisement oh yeah so they've yeah. They've, they've basically figured that a, a lap or a, a grand prix oh. has to be right around like well or at least 305 kilometers except for monaco uh, or right around 305 kilometers uh, that's that for the full length but in each track like can only like or, and that's why you see like the new ones where they get like even a lot of freedom mm -hmm. to build it never goes past four kilometers okay like five kilometers it, the the baku one is like special because it's the, the, yeah, they, it's, it's gonna gone. be the second longest i believe now yeah up but, there with like spa yeah. silverstone is really long mm -hmm. they're in the like five and six kilometer range yeah. spa oh, wow. is over six i think yeah. they're, they're looking for Just an ideal six. like lap time of like, right. around you know somewhere between oh, a minute and a half and two minutes Per lap gives you like that ideal like sweet spot in terms of advertising, wow. which is fucked that that's what's actually driving it right, and like yeah. limiting. <laughs> but you'll see a big like from from Spa and Silverstone those tracks you're gonna see like 38, 40 laps, something 42 laps, something like that. And then Monaco this weekend, I think we're gonna see 70 something. 78, so, yeah. I think ah, it is, or cool. 79, something around there, 76 or 78, I can't remember. It's a lot though. Yeah, and wow. they don't they don't even do the full 305 k's. They do 260. Yeah. Yeah. They do it shorter because there's it's so the average speed is so much slower, but right, okay, yeah. And this one, too, this is this one is up in the like 70 some laps as well. They do the full 305k, it's a quicker track, but right, there's something around 70, yeah. I maybe, mean, obviously, like high 70s. a larger track or a longer track would have the drivers having to learn more about it, yeah. right? And, yeah, and, and a little and, bit and, of that, too, yeah. Uh, they reach they would be reaching higher speeds, they can probably yeah. like attack like uh, higher speed corners that they, they can do like what drivers really like really want to do. Mm -hmm. This track also has a quite like you know, I mean, it's 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 quite an undulating track and if it, you expand it to the full length it's gonna have some interesting things with the um with the ele change of elevations around some corners where you mm. can have some like blind corner situations it's gonna be good it's gonna be good if they do that if they yeah, have it ready yeah. by for this year's grand prix yeah it's not gonna happen this year no, probably <laughs> this not year. but because hey. because of this planning consent bullshit yeah which i, I really think is just the austrian the provincial government whatever it's called over there that um they they're just concerned about noise and stuff but i don't know well, it's gonna they don't want to scare the cows yeah yeah it's, it's, it's gonna scale it's scare old bessie yeah. <laughs> yeah you never know, I don't know yeah uh i don't know i think that's pretty much all i got for this week i think uh um, more or less anything in, else you got no in closing i think we can uh just I, th I think we're just look really looking forward to what's gonna happen this weekend mm -hmm. and uh, it's gonna be a lot of fun a lot of uh big news gonna be sort of locked down we're gonna find out about the juice head protection um guys a also bit more about Heineken probably. sorry about uh uh last week's episode and 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 the technical difficulty i, th yeah, I, th I think was... maybe we should have apologized at the, at the beginning if you're still kicking around or you heard our last uh, our last show and you were here for your last show uh sorry about all what happened yeah <laughs> i was pretty upset yeah yeah no no it was i wasn't happy hey, jesus um but no it, it seems like we're back on top of our technical things and uh, and yes. we 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 will have an, a bit of an announcement ready for you guys uh, between now and next uh, next week's episode or mm -hmm. by next week's next week's episode. Oh, one more thing, one final thing here. I got. Uh, I was trying to pull this up uh, just before the last segment. Uh, Danny Rick and Sebastian Vettel tied in the standings. I, th I thought uh, Danny Rick was slightly ahead, both forty-eight points. Max Verstappen's got 38, and Lewis Hamilton's just ahead of both of them with 57. But, wow. but, but crucially behind Kimi Raikkonen. Yeah, Kimi Raikkonen's got 61 to Vettel's 48 as well. Mm, it's interesting, man. interesting. Rosberg's sitting at a cool 100. Ooh, Hundy. Yeah, it's going to take a second. Yeah, something's wrong with my internet. It's going slow now. Can't see the constructors. But yeah, killing it. All right. And now kill it with this beat, Mike. Yeah, come hang out. Boys. Come hang out on Betty's. Yes. If you like this track, uh, listen to bamboo.com, and uh, I'm sure they'll have a show coming up at some point this year. I might summer. watch this race twice. I think I might. 16th uh, of June. June there, 16th. there you go. North by Northeast. Oh, shit. What's the venue? Uh, 
Bovine Sex Club. Wicked. National Festival? Yeah. All right, see you guys. Bye. <laughs>